Professor Halder uh, did a PhD from IAC Bangalore. Her area of research are functional nanomaterials for renewable energy, energy storage, metal ion batteries, environmental pollutant degradation. The key work uh, include the candle suit journey from pollutant to a functional material. Second, one step synthesis of bifunctional iron doped manganese oxide nano rod for zinc air battery. And also, a uh, gallium based compound for hydrogen evolution and oxygen reduction reaction. Aditi, can you hear me? Professor Aditi. Huh. Now I can, I can speak. Hi. Yeah. Can we see your video? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Hi. So we are ready to go. So what you can do, you can start sharing your slide first. Then we'll check your audio and then you can go ahead. Uh, you can share. Yes, the... we can see the slide. You go to full screen. Yes. Now it is fine. Excellent. It is excellent now. Audio is also good. So I think we are good to go. Please go ahead. Okay. So uh, I think I'm audible to everyone. And first of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Shudhamshu, for inviting me for this talk. And, um, you know, I started my electrochemistry journey with him. So it's a, uh, you know, it's kind of an honor for me to give a talk where he organized something. And uh, it's also my opportunity to talk about little bit IIT Mandi. We are uh, second phase of IIT and we came along with IIT Gandhinagar. I want to show you the view of IIT first before talking, uh, start my talk. You can see we have a uh, snow clad mountain in winter and beautiful summer. And you are all, I mean, I know the COVID-19 situation, we cannot go anywhere. If you have an opportunity, please do visit us. So come back to uh, today's talk. Uh, my talk is today on activity descriptor for hydrogen revolution reaction in transition metal oxides. And uh, it, I will be talking uh, how we can control the hydrogen evolution reaction at different condition before going into uh, further of the topic. I also uh, want to show you about what we do in our lab. We basically are, uh, as uh, Dr. Shudhangshu says, we are the functional nanomaterial group. We design material for energy conversion and energy storage using the art abundant element. We do for electrochemical water splitting. We do for zinc air battery. We develop electrocatalyst for CO2 reduction. Also water pollution is one of our, or, uh, water pollution control or the water recycling is our, our uh, um, you know, interesting area of interest. And uh, these are the representative publication from our group you know, where we uh, work on energy conversion, storage, you know, CO2 reduction. If you are uh, interested, you can go and look into the paper in more detail. So come back to today's talk. Uh, what motivates me to uh, work on this particular area is uh, definitely the, you know, all of us know about uh, depletion of the fossil fuel and all. But if you look into the total electricity generated in India, if you go into in detail about this, we can see that in India is such a country, till today we are depending upon the fossil fuel, coal, natural gas, or petroleum based. We do look into renewable energy, but which is very less, 9% out of the total energy consumption or energy users by India. And if you go for the renewable energy, we can see that it has been divided into different uh, factors and uh, something which we should be looking into. Our number of 9% for renewable energy should be shifted more and petrol because with the time. And as before me, uh, Dr. Subramaniam from IIT Hyderabad, he also showed that how the depletion of the fossil fuel is happening and how we should be more dependent on the renewable energy. So hydrogen is one of our choice of interest which we will be looking for. And if we look for more on the production of hydrogen, and if you look into more detail about it, we will see that production of hydrogen, um, you know, if you go in a book of hydrogen generation and storage, this is the course actually I taught in this um, semester, I can say last semester, 
hydrogen generation mainly happening from the uh, fossil fuel when we do the refinement of the fossil uh, fuel or refinement of the natural gas or petroleum one fraction of we use the smr or the steam methane reforming to generate the hydrogen so when we are talking about sustainable you know zero carbon hydrogen generation then we should be not dependent upon the technology or not depend upon the fossil fuel we should make hydrogen in a sustainable way electrolyzer is also one of these things on one of the technique which help us to generate hydrogen in a better way or in a not in a sustainable way this particular data this has been uh, international energy agency data of june 2000 um 19 data if you look into that there are three option given our soecc solid oxide electrolyzer pem which is the poly electrolyte membrane electrolyzer and alkaline electrolyzer the number of project and the number amount of energy generation in 2015 to 19 has been drastically increased that clear cut shows that the world is now looking more towards the generation of the hydrogen using the electrolyzer or using the sustainable path so if we look into the electrolyzer thing there are two as i said i will be mostly concentrating on the alkaline electrolyzer or alkaline electrolysis there are two way here shown alkaline um, and uh, pem poly electrolyte membrane or acid electrolyzer and this hydrogen which is generated can be used in the fuel cell stack to generate the energy now if what what constrain us what makes us uh, you know uh, these things so, so why so long took us for us to take in 2015 on after that only so it is getting you know uh, the production becomes so high that lies in the challenges and the challenges are in the state of the art electrocatalyst so the catalyst which will be used it should be low cost economically viable production of hydrogen from renewable sources can only be possible when the cost of the catalyst is low so we if you look into this particular thing also this one of the reason fuel cell didn't get much attention or much uh, you know the economical not economically viable because the cost of the catalyst is very high and if you see this particular data of doe 2016 the cost of the catalyst is actually changing the fuel cell system cost when it was 124 dollar for 1 kilowatt energy generation you see it was in 2006 and then in 2014 the cost has been reduced by almost more than half actually 55 dollar per kilowatt and in 2020 it targeted to to be 40 dollar and in slowly ultimately should go beyond so we can see that the cost of the catalyst is one of the factor now why cost of the catalyst is important because uh, what we are using as a catalyst are very expensive like platinum so we need to look into the catalyst which is earth abundant which is like oxide based catalyst transition metal catalyst now if we get the transition metal catalyst so there are a lot of problem related to that one of the problem is their stability so uh, we can do something to improve the stability of the catalyst and we can do in we can improve the catalytic um, stability or catalytic activity by doing the kind of defect engineering like doping by creating vacancy or creating heterojunction junction just before me when dr subramanya was talking about wo3 he was showing the problem in the wo3 as using as a pc catalyst because it doesn't fall under gap right and then he showed that yes they created he he doped with the gold and then he showed how it improved i will show you today in my talk that how not only by doping also by creating vacancy we can improve the activity of transition metal catalyst so as my talk talks about h uh, the uh, you know in a activity descriptor for hydrogen evolution i wanted to first talk about what the mechanism for the hydrogen evolution especially for <coughs> alkaline electrolyzer the first thing for hgr or alkaline uh, hydrogen evolution is that it first started with the water absorption and dissociation so first step process is the water molecule alkaline medium water molecule first should get adsorbed and then it, it this first step we say volmer step h2o plus electron and it sits in the active sites h plus plus oh minus should give it go <coughs> excuse me and the next step which we say that ferrosky or tuffel so 
Heroski or Tafel, which one proceed, uh, the which we they will follow. So for the first one is same for both of them, both of the mechanism. That is the adsorption of hydro water. And the second step, what is happening? We are having the hydrogen getting adsorbed on the surface, and the and the second hydrogen should also come to generate the H two. The second hydrogen can be generated from another water molecule, and this can be done with the chemical reaction again and H two O. In case of Tafel, two hydrogen molecule should be we should not say hydrogen molecule. We should say adsorbed hydrogen. It sits side by side. And then they are interacting with each other, and they will getting dissolved as H two. So by seeing what is the slope for the hydrogen evolution kinetics, we can say that whether my reaction will be following uh, Tafel, uh, Volmer Tafel, or Volmer Hedowski. So what? Why when I talk about the slope, I will show you an example, and I will clearly tell you what what I I mean to say. So keep we can keep right now like that. We have Volmer Hedowski or Volmer Tafel depend upon the whether it is an electrochemical desorption or a chemical desorption. You can see the next slide also I have put here that how two hydrogen they are interacting with each other adsorbed hydrogen and um, or adsorbed hydrogen over here and then they they go as H two. Or a H hydro proton comes and attached on the existing H and forms the H two and goes. So these are the two mechanism we know. Now, if I know this procedure, I know the mechanism how it follow. Then I should also try to understand who will be controlling this mechanism. Who is the activity descriptor for this process? If I go to this next slide, there are three factor I have noted down. One M H. That is metal or metal oxide adsorb hydrogen adsorb energetics. This is exactly morning. Doctor Ali had told how the hydrogen or not only hydrogen, how the adsorbed and the metal surface controls the energetics of the reaction. Second, energy of the formation of the activated complex and defects. Whether the presence of the defects on the surface, how they are controlling the activity. Now I'm not going to talk about metal hydrogen adsorbed energy today. I will be mostly concentrating on these two work: energy of or formation of the activated complex and defects. And I will tell you with certain example. So this is the one which we say that volcano plot, which shows that the metal hydrogen, like you know, hydrogen getting adsorbed, right? And then hydrogen should be released. So if hydrogen is tightly adsorbed on the surface, it is not good. Even it should have enough energy to adsorb and enough energy. It, it should be an optimum. So if you look into the particular uh, diagram here, this is a very authentic paper, electrochemical acta paper. Here you can see platinum. Why known to be the best electrocatalyst? Because platinum has the optimum hydrogen adsorption and desorption energy. So we are trying to follow platinum. So what material we are going to synthesize? It should have the optimum. Metal hydrogen or the substrate hydrogen bond strength. So I will not be talking more in that. I will be concentrating on the second activity descriptor. This particular thing first time got um, noted by Dr. Stamenkovic and Nenad Markovic. Uh, I think when we know the SCS Catalyst Journal, we should also know the editor. That is uh, actually Dr. Stamenkovic. So this is the paper in Science in 2011. They have published and they have. Told about this, the energy of the formation of the activated complex is the controlling factor for the hydrogen evolution in case of the alkaline medium. So you have a metal and you have a metal oxide substrate with it. So here, for example, they have taken example platinum and nickel hydroxide, nickel NiOH hole two. So these are your complex present here, and then you are we we which we are able to see that. How this NiOH is OH hole two, that is the nickel hydroxide, controlling the hydrogen evolution reaction. So if you look into this particular diagram over here, the water molecule at adsorption on the surface on the right here, this oxygen from the water molecule is actually having the bonding with the nickel, and the hydrogen is having a very good bonding from the platinum present. So this. Activated complex is further controlling the desorption of the hydrogen from the substrate. So that this is the role of a metal oxide 
or the transition metal oxide when it is in couple with the metal. It is also, we will be seeing an example. This is one of the first uh, paper which actually clearly explains that how an oxide can control the hydrogen evolution. Now, the, followed by this, they have published another paper in and who came in 2012, where they have taken the different substrates. See here, all this material you have seen, <coughs> gold, copper, silver, ruthenium, iridium, platinum. You've seen this there at, uh, in the different medium. They have, you know, they have taken k which they have taken perchloric acid, and then they have taken the nickel hydroxide modified. And you can see that how their activity, especially if you look into the case of nickel, which is a transition metal, its activity is highest when it is modified with nickel hydroxide. So metal metal hydroxide is actually playing a very important role in the improvement of AGI. By inspired by this work, we also did some of this, you know, followed by this. So we tested the role of molybdenum in nickel molybdenum oxide catalyst. And we did the, these are supported catalysts and we did the temperature dependent hydrogen evolution. So we, we found that so when I was talking about the slope, if you look into this, this is the hydrogen evolution data. So if you see, this is the onset potential where my cursor is, this is a platinum data, which is a very good, very best catalyst. In case of, in case of only nickel RGO, and if you say NiMO2, NiMO2 has better activity, better tougher slope. And in fact, if you do the impedance, study the impedance data, you will be also seeing that it has the least charge transfer resistance. So it is the best among all of the three. So when molybdenum is controlling the molybdenum oxide is controlling the activity of the nickel. Followed by that, we did the photoelectrochemical hydrogen evolution with this particular catalyst. And we indeed find out, yes, this is this exactly happening over here where nickel molybdenum oxide is much better than alum nickel. So followed by this particular work, we also wanted to study the another effect that is the defects or oxygen vacancy and if the effect of doping. So these are the uh, important things. So we know about the defects. We know about the vacancy present into the system. Now I will show you an example how vacancy will be able to control my activity. Okay. So for uh, the example I will be taking here is WO3. Morning when we attend the talk, we got to know that WO3 is not a good catalyst for hydrogen evolution. And it and we will show you how we can actually do the phase transition in WO3 and we can incorporate the vacancy in it and make it as a good catalyst. So here is the work. This first figure, figure number A, if you look into this, WO3 minus X. So this is a hexagonal WO3 as prepared. Then what my student did, she took the sample and she treated the sample under vacuum. So he did it the temperature dependent uh, annealing of the sample in the vacuum annealing. So at 350, 450, 550, and 650. And at 650, when it um, heated it, it collapsed and completely a new nanoware structure came. And then we parallelly did the XRD. So W3 minus X, we started. This is a hexagonal XRD clear little. If you go back to the next vacuum 350, slowly, slowly, little change, but not that. 450, you can see the XRD is almost gone. 550, completely different phase formation happens. 650, there is also change in the little change, but there is a change. But if you look into the crystal structure, vacuum 550 and vacuum 650 are completely different. Both are monoclinic, but it is a different phase of the monoclinic, and this is another. So vacuum 550, after that, so we need to hit the sample to convert into hexagonal to monoclinic. So we say that our transition temperature is 550 C and it is under vacuum annealing. Now when we go, go to the XPS, we try to do the XPS and we saw that our tungsten 4F, where would we found that W6 plus is the one which we are getting the oxidation state. At 550, we can see the presence of W uh, plus 5. So two new oxidation state is coming. Also another thing we check is the presence of the lattice oxygen. So there are two kinds of oxygen here. One is the lattice oxygen and one is the adsorbed oxygen. Lattice oxygen is the part of the oxygen which is with the WO3. Adsorbed oxygen which is adsorbed on the surface of the WO3. Now more we create the vacancy in the system, the presence of adsorbed oxygen is more. 
this particular data not only this particular observation not only been uh, observed by us but also another group where they found that when they created more vacancy in the system they show, have seen the in increase in the adsorbed oxygen now when we are uh, then as uh, you know dr polishetter also said morning that we wanted to see whether any radical formation or any free electron there any vacancies there in the system epr or electromagnetic resonance is the one which will be able to tell us whether we have any uh, you know many vacancy or any free radical free electron in the system or not so when we have done the epr we found that vacuum 550 is showing g equal to 1.9 which is the presence of the gyromagnetic ratio of the free electron which is 1.9 so we could say that the maximum oxygen vacancy in the 550 sample and it happened with the phase change anyway we went to took the sample to the electrochemical data and as um, you can see here that as prepared wo3 is not at all good but with the slowly slowly doing the um, you know when we did the vacuum manually 550 sample shows as the best activity in fact 550 Mm, uh, sample shows the hr um, uh, the tuffle the tuffle for it is found to be 30 millivolt per day where platinum is actually 26 millivolt per day and it is also having the lowest charge transfer resistance when we um, uh, looked into the data we could clearly tell that okay we created the maximum vacancy in 550 and after that the crystal structure completely collapsed and we got a different monoclinic structure anyway this sample again we have um, tried to see for almost 8 hours we kept it and we tried to see whether we can see a stable hydrogen evolution for 8 hours we um, in the medium of um uh, we we uh, in the uh, this is this has been done in alkaline media we have found out it is pretty good and then we try to do a pc measurement with the sample but uh, we could see that in the presence of light the current in the energy when this happened so when we tried to check with the as prepared wo3 you can see the current coming out from the chrono amperometry photo current density is only uh, 10 to the power a very very small 10 to the power 10 milliampere per centimeter square where it has to be it has been almost stabilized to nearly 20 in the first sample and it was quite stable so stability is is okay so quite stable catalyst at least to 8 hours we could see now here we could we introduce the oxygen vacancies to see the enhancement now in the next work i will show you we could use the oxygen doping on the other hand to improve the catalytic activity so this is not a transition metal oxide molybdenum sulfide we have taken but here also transition metal oxide will come but in a negative way so we'll look into this so here mos2 we have prepared the mos2 nano sheet i will show you the um, diagram and then what we did that we we know that if you if you see the two dimensional molybdenum sulfide right which if, if you look into that even if you prepare a few meters of the two dimensional molybdenum sulfide it is only the edges which are catalytically active not the basal plane so to make catalytically active we need to create lot of vacancy into the system or we need to have lot of edges onto the system lot of the lot of defect into the system how we can do that so this is the then my student lalita what she did it she took the sample into the oxygen plasma irradiation technique and she irradiated that sample for the different time so here is the tm images for the sample if you ask people this is a stm image she irradiated in the oxygen plasma technique for several hours she also did it into the inert atmosphere where we didn't see any improvement to make sure that we are doing good we have indeed carried out this experiment and we we these are not single layer mos2 there's a layers of mos2 are there and then what we could see that that when we uh, gone for the tm we could see the presence of the hetero junction so what happened that presence of the oxygen plasma when we treat the sample in the oxygen plasma it actually dope oxygen inside the mos2 and form the mo3 so we could see the hetero junction into our structure both mos2 and mo3 but how do you prove it so first we did the raman so in the case of raman we could see that uh, first we i will show the xps and then raman maybe raman data we can go further so we see that 0 second sample 30 second sample 90 second and 180 second sample if you see the peak at 400 and 
if you see zero second sample or 30 second sample there are very there is no peak at around nearly 200 two three or three nearly 300 or 200 to 400 centimeter inverse you see the area but with the time the there is a new peak originated and 90 second sample has you can clearly see the high mo3 formation and mo2 small amount but mostly it is mo3 so you can see 90 second or 180 second sample clearly shows us clearly the raman data shows that yes oxygen plasma treatment or oxygen plasma treatment or plasma you know created vacancy or created the mo3 heterojunction or generated mo3 in our system and mo2 is also uh, mo s2 is also there and mo3 is also there so on the, on the other hand when we did the xps we could see that yes molybdenum uh, could uh, new new peaks are coming out and mo plus uh, plus positive mo plus and mo6 plus is also coming when when for this um, doing the uh, sulfur xps data there is a formation of SOXY minus that is a molybdenum sulfoxide formation and in, you can see that 90 second sample or you can see in 180 second sample but this sulfoxide peak clearly decreases then we took the sample for electrochemical activity if you see the electrochemical activity the best activity we could say the 90 second sample even for the impedance data also it shows the least charge transfer resistance and then for almost eight hours we did the chronoamperometry study we found out that yes it is quite stable catalyst now you can ask me this question that why i saw only 30 second sample to be the best sample why not 90 and 180 we believe that mos2 mo3 heterojunction is the one which controls the activity but when we irradiate more we generate more mo3 which is not beneficial for the you know for the hgr so we need to have an optimum condition where we can get the create this kind of heterojunction in our system and now if you ask me that whether this 90 second or 180 second is this uh, you know if we if i irradiate only for 30 second or if i irradiate 90 second i will the guess no it depend upon the sample depend upon the dose what you are giving so it is a sample specific for example the similar experiment i'm not showing this data here when we tried with mos2 rgo there the best data we got is not in the 30 second but in 180 second sample so it depends upon the condition and the nature nature of the sample okay so we also have, um, i did this work with the collaboration of my colleague at school of engineering uh, dr rick Conner, where uh, we have a joint phd student so she is very good in making mock and what we did is we actually burned this mock to create the you know lot of uh, active sites into it and then uh, uh, because mop usually is not that much conductive at all so we tried to get the carbon support and the metal oxide center from that we did some uh, generated some of the work from this is at the representative publication and which we found the best what we found in our work is that when uh, nickel encapsulated between the nitrogen graphitized carbon material which is a very good catalyst where it is very active in oxygen reduction oxygen evolution and hydrogen evolution reaction so this is uh, this um, shows that yes metal organic framework is also one of the good precursor if we design it properly will be really a good material for the future catalyst preparation so uh, these are um, a little bit work from my other group so we what we do also as i said that wastewater treatment generate the generation we do and during the wastewater treatment generation we also generate lot of hydrogen we are uh, two, taking two methods one is the electrocoagulation and we are trying to see how much hydrogen we can generate from there also we uh, take so these are the structure this is um, tio2 this tio2 structures we are trying to use for the environmental remediation and electrocatalytic oxidation so as uh, i think uh, how much talk uh, time i have i'm almost done uh, Aditi, you, you still have five minutes to go, but we okay. can have more discussion if you want to. Okay. But so take, this, take, take easily five minutes. Okay, I'll just take five minutes. So this is another work we are going in my research group, which is the um, battery, which usually we are working on, uh, Gene Care battery. And uh, one of my students, she's Ankita, she's working on the... Um, Aditi, you have, you have actually 10 minutes. Okay, so good. Yeah. I am. I am going to just finish it within a minute. So okay, I fine. Think, 
we can have more discussion okay okay so uh, she is very good in making this kind of different kind of mno2 alpha mno2 and delta mno2 when we are trying to see that whether we can make good battery out of it so here um, are the few work which uh, you can see this is a beautiful uh, delta mno2 structure which is doped with iron and we made few device out of it solid state device and aqueous um, electrolyte also she made some of the uh delta mno2 which is a layer structure with doping with cobalt which also we are using for zinc air battery so this is my research group and these are the funding agencies which i'm grateful for doing my research and thank you 